Tenetato Katoa, good evening. Farmers won't have to pay for their emissions for another seven years under a new proposal from the National Party. They unveiled their Agriculture Emissions Reduction Plan today. It would see a separate emissions scheme for the sector, but it wouldn't start until 2030. Now, that's five years later than current regulations. There would be new restrictions on converting prime farmland into carbon forest farms, including a three-year ban on whole farm conversions of productive land. And as we reported yesterday, they'd overturn the ban on gene editing and genetic modification and set up a new regulator to check low emission grasses, feed and vaccines. But as Lloyd Burr reports, not everyone's on board with it. Christopher Luxon donning the red bands, surrounded by swan dries and having a good old whinge. We have become a very negative, yet whiny, inward-looking country and we have lost the plot and uh, we've got to get our mojo back. For National, that means getting farmers back on side, so they're kicking the emissions can down the paddock by five years. We are going to introduce uh, you know, agricultural pricing, but we're going to get the balance right and we're going to get the sequencing right. The government's aiming for an agricultural emissions scheme by 2025, but that's looking unlikely given the stalemate on He Waka Ekenoa, a planet designed alongside 14 sector groups. There was a plan produced a year ago by the sector. The government blew it up, they shot it to bits and they killed it. So National's got all 14 groups on side, right? Uh, we have a good support. I, I, I can't remember whether it's all 14, but I've spoken, I know Todd has spoken to many of them. Pulling in his agricultural spokesperson, Todd McClay, to confirm no. National would also allow farmers to offset their own emissions with forests and wetlands on their own farms. But carbon farming as a whole gets a huge shake-up. They want to banish this behaviour. Our most productive farmland being converted into pine carbon farms. They'll ban it for three years and put further restrictions on its scale. The three-year ban is uh, quite sensible. It gives us the time to actually address those policy settings that, that's driving this. The final pillar of National's policy is to scrap the GE and GM ban, allowing things like low emission grasses, feed and vaccines. It's available in 35 other countries and it's not yet available here in New Zealand. That is insanely stupid. A number of our export industries proudly put GE free on their label and actually make quite a lot of money from that. While Labor's rolling its eyes at the policy for being too weak... The National Party seem to be treating the climate with contempt. Act's rolling its eyes because it's too familiar. It's good that they're moving towards Act. That's good for us, them and New Zealand farmers. However, I notice they are still just kicking the can down the road. Seymour understandably concerned Nationals trying to poach the voters it lost to Act in 2020. So expect more photo ops like this from Luxon as he tries to shake his urban image. When was the last time you were on a farm and have you ever milked cows? Yes I have, yes I have. <laughs> Earlier in the year actually, um, down in South Auckland. Now he'll be trying to milk farmers for every vote he can. Lloyd's with us now. Kia ora Lloyd, isn't National just preaching to the converted? Well, essentially, yes, Mike, they're using this policy, this issue, re emissions reduction and climate to ignite a bit of a battle on that right side of parliament uh, of politics, particularly with their bedfellow, the ACT Party. Now, you could ask why they're doing this. Maybe it's to downplay that bargaining power that the ACT Party may have uh, following the election if they're both in a position to form a government. But it may have some unintended consequences for the National Party uh, as well. Yes, they're appeasing to that rural base, the rural base that they've always had, but it may be polarising to those urban swing voters and these are swing voters that you're going to need to win an election uh, and and for the the number one election issue for these urban swing voters maybe the number two election issue for them is climate change particularly following what we had earlier this year the devastation the deluge the floods that we had across the north island so for me my take on this it's not really about emissions reduction it's not really about climate it's more about politics Lloyd Burr,